Welcome to another video lecture cast of Mr. Moser's 8th grade American history. Uh, again, we're looking at some of the groups that settled the Western lands uh, after the Civil War from 1860 to 1900. Um, we've talked a little bit about the railroad builders and the homesteaders. Uh, and so today we're going to have a chance to kind of look at two other major groups that will settle the West after the American Civil War in the last part of Western expansion, Manifest Destiny. You can't stop it and neither can I. So uh, the reading for this particular section is going to come from Chapter 18, Section 1. This should sound familiar to you. This was the same reading that we did with the Transcontinental Railroad. Uh, that reading section also dealt with the miners and the ranchers, which is who we're going to talk about more today. So some of the guiding questions for today's lecture are, why did the miners go west? Uh, what was their legacy? What was their impact? Uh, why did some Americans want to become cowboys? Uh, some still do today. Uh, what were their hardships, challenges of living that lifestyle? And, and then what's their legacy? How, what kind of impact did the did the Cowboys have on Western expansion? So that's going to be our topic today, miners and ranchers. So here we go. Let's learn more about this particular groups. The miners. Uh, this is a similar story to the 49ers, the California Gold Rush Americans back in 1849. Uh, California wasn't the only place that experienced a gold discovery. There were other places, especially after the Civil War in states like Colorado and Nevada and Arizona and New Mexico that had gold strikes, this gold discovered and silver places discovered. And that encouraged, again, a large scale migration of people into those lands, really seeking fortunes. Uh, they were hoping to strike it rich, find that gold deposit that would make them instant millionaires. Uh, and so that was their main goal of going west, was kind of looking for this gold and silver, these precious metal, metals that were out in the mountain regions of the, of the west. Their hardships, kind of like the 49ers, um, these towns developed very rapidly. Uh, gold would be discovered in a nearby area, and then within a few days, hundreds of people had flooded into the area to find gold and silver. And so these towns established very ri rapidly and had little time to establish any kind of semblance of government, mayors, a uh, uh, town sheriff. So these were kind of wild west towns, very little law of order there in those places. Um, just really a difficult lifestyle for these miners. I mean, they were working long hours and living in some pretty extreme environments and lived in a place that wasn't always the safest uh, in the West. Legacies of the miners, um, by the unfortunate aspect was the damage to the land. Uh, there'll be quite a bit of pollution damage created by some of these miners in the Mountain West regions. Uh, they were looking for gold. The practices back then were not as environmentally sound as they were today. And we're gonna find out later on the school year uh, about a guy named John Muir, who actually goes out to some of these western states and sees the pollution and the destruction in some of these very beautiful places and uh, will encourage the government to step in and, and save some of these lands as national parks and creates kind of a first national park service. A another bad thing about the miners in terms of the legacies was that they did displace a lot of Native Americans. And we're going to talk a lot more about the Native American experience during western expansion here uh, in, the, in the coming days. but. It's a un too unfamiliar story. Uh, gold's discovered on some Native American lands. They're forced to move to a different land. I mean, it, it happened time and time and time again. Another legacy of the, of the miners was it did really create a lot of cities out in the West. Uh, if you follow the NBA, uh, you know the Denver Nuggets team. Uh, they're called the Golden Nuggets because Denver was really initially a mining town. Towns like Denver and Reno uh, started out as mining communities. Uh, some towns turned out really well and, and have lasted. And then we have the ghost towns. Um, those are towns that f rapidly formed because of gold or silver discoveries. And then once the gold ran out or the silver ran out, the people left. There was no reason to stay there anymore. And some of those towns still exist today. Um, so like the one you see here is a tourist attraction. So now you can go visit the old Wild West and see what the streets of those towns might have looked like. Um, and of course, no one's living there, living there anymore. Um, but in terms of a lot of these places are still around out in the West, these ghost towns that have kind of just been left to um, slowly slip away unless they've been bought as a tourist attraction. Uh, the other key legacy of the miners was this idea of opening the West for settlement, especially the Mountain West, places like Colorado and New Mexico and Arizona. Uh, those states uh, really gained populations of people moving to their, their, their territories and helping them become states eventually. Uh, because of the, these mining communities. So the miners, um, difficult places to live in. Towns are a little sketchy, kind of, you know, a lot of violence 
in some of these places, uh, and, and definitely um, help settle the western states. The next group we're going to talk about are the ranchers and cowboys. Uh, why did they go west? Money, plain and simple. Uh, populations back in the eastern states were just exploding, huge population gains. Large numbers of people were, were kind of moving into the country at this time. A lot of immigration was coming to these eastern cities, and they needed beef. They needed food. And there was a lot of money to be made from raising cattle uh, to provide the beef and the food of these growing cities. So a lot of people moved out to the West, uh, groups like Texans and uh, Mexican Americans and even African Americans. Oftentimes we have this image of a cowboy, usually it's a white male, kind of a gunslinger, kind of a very isolated guy, doesn't like to be around people, rather just be out in the open prairie. But in fact, a lot of cowboys were actually Mexican Americans and African Americans. A lot of slaves, once they were freed, after the Civil War will come out to, uh, to the West to seek new opportunities. And so quite a few cowboys were actually African Americans and Mexican Americans as well. There is a great, great video clip from the story of us about the cowboy experience. And so if you haven't had a chance to watch that, please make sure you do under the uh, the on-demand video section, great stories about cowboys, kind of their lifestyle and some of their information. Really a great kind of um, follow-up from the reading from the textbook here. The cowboys' uh, main function was really to drive cattle. That's what their job was. Uh, the cattle were kind of raised, the spring cows were born in, in parts of central Texas, and the cowboys would get on their horses, and they would then drive these cattle north through the Great Plains up into Kansas. Why Kansas? Well, actually, Kansas had a pretty well-established railroad route through the north-central part of Kansas, and there are little towns that were settled along those um, railroads, much like we talked about before, like my own home state, in, 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 in hometown of Davenport, Nebraska. Uh, some of these cities in Kansas, like Dodge City or Abilene, Kansas, uh, Wichita, Kansas, were places where uh, the cattle could be driven to the railroads for market and sold. Uh, and then shipped back east to the cities that needed that food. And so this was a very booming place to go for cattle drives, uh, to kind of turn in your cattle for money. The idea of cowboy and a cowboy culture uh, actually comes from a Mexican tradition called the vaqueros, uh, which are original the cattle drive. And a lot of the, the traditions and practices in rodeo actually comes from that tradition of the vaqueros. The Americans kind of adopted and um, added to their own. Uh, we think about the cowboy, we think of the lone rider on the horse following the herd of cattle. Uh, we think about the, the cowboy hat, like maybe like this kind of hat, or we might even think more along the lines of, of these kind of cowboy hats. You know, this idea of uh, protecting their face from, you know, from the sun. They were outside a lot of hours during the day. Uh, they had the, you know, the long sleeve shirts, the, the chaps on their legs to protect them from, um, you know, leg burn from the riding of the horses. Uh, they had, of course, the, the lasso that was being used to help gather the cattle if they happened to get away. And, of, co of course, you know, kind of this gun, gun culture with a cult, you know, cult revolver uh, that was used by cowboys to protect themselves from bandits um, and to act as kind of a self-defense. Again, with all this money changing hands with these cattle um, being sent to market, um, there were bandits and, and robbers out there that they had to kind of protect themselves over. So a lot of this I identity that we have with the cowboy culture, you know, it comes from the actual tradition of these cowboys in this time period. What are the hardships of the ranchers and cowboys? Well, as we mentioned, long hours. I mean, you're out in the sun all day. You're out in the elements all day. That's why you had a handkerchief to kind of protect your face from dust being kicked up on the cattle. That's why you had the cowboy hat to protect you from sun. Um, Cows are big animals, and they're spooky. They get they get scared very easily, and they will stampede, stampede, uh, and they'll trample you. They'll 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 run you over, and they're they're dangerous animals. They can be very very dangerous. I, growing up on a farm, I I knew people who got hurt uh, with working with cattle. They're very large animals, and they're very strong and powerful. Uh, these cattle towns, places like Dodge City, become very famous, like the wild wild west, with gunfights and 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 all the saloons and all the kind of the very you know mischievous environment and some that's based in reality that, you know these towns were not the, mostly the safest places to be in um, over time that they, they did try to develop some safety elements but they're they're kind of rowdy places and of course there's being out on the prairies for long periods of time 
The legacy of the Cowboys, real, again, with a lot of these groups, they really are helping establish the Western Plains, opening up the Plains for settlement. Um, in terms of the Midwest, they really help create what we now know as the cattle industry. Um, some of these icons you see here should look familiar to you. Uh, Omaha South, a high school here in our town, our city, their, na their mascot are the Packers. Why the Packers? Well, South Omaha was the center of a meatpacking plant. Uh, cowboys could bring their cattle up to Omaha, right along the train, you know, you know Union Pacific Transcontinental Railroad came right through this area and uh, bring those uh, beef to market. Our indoor football team, the Omaha Beef, okay? Uh, sometimes people out of state, when they hear Omaha, one of the most common things they think about with food is Nebraska steaks, corn-fed beef. Uh, Omaha Steaks is a, a internationally known company for shipping steaks really anywhere in the world. And of course, if you're familiar with college football, you know about the Texas Longhorns, uh, you know, the hook'em horns, right? Um, that's, that's part of Texas's culture too, this idea of cowboys. And it's still very much a part of ca uh, Texas's culture. Uh, and even parts of the Midwest here in Nebraska, there's, there's quite a bit of kind of that cowboy culture, this idea of ranching. So we've learned a lot these last couple of lectures about some of these different groups of people that came to the West. Uh, before the Civil War, between 1800 and 1860, uh, we had groups like the Mountain Men, uh, like the Missionaries, like the 49ers, the Chinese, the Mormons, all coming and settling in the Western lands. And then after the Civil War, two major laws get passed, the Pacific Railroad, Railroad Act that helped establish the Transcontinental Railroad, makes a traveling from the East Coast, the West Coast, which used to take six months, now takes six days. That encourages development. We have the Homestead Act that helped give away free land for people to settle in the West and brought in the homesteaders, people like my ancestors, my great-great-grandfather. And then, of course, we have the miners and the cowboys that will kind of help fill in um, many of these Western lands and Western territories. We'll have more to talk about with Western expansion. There's still an important aspect of how Native Americans are going to be impacted by this expansion West. Uh, so that'll be a, a lecture for another day. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this information, and I hope it helps you uh, with the information that you need to know for your assessments. Have a uh, great time, everybody. Again, if you have questions, make sure you do ask. But uh, thanks for listening.